Hello, I'm Amanda Unucci. I always carry this music around with me wherever I go so that when I say my name, you can hear that music. And I'm the director of this film. <laughs> and joining me are... Um, I'm Peter Capaldi, playing the part of Malcolm Tucker. I'm uh, Tom Hollander. I play Simon Foster. I'm Chris Addison. I play Toby Wright. I'm Jeannie McKee, and I play Judy Malloy. Here's Malcolm going into to act, the actual number 10. We were allowed to film at uh, the Prime Minister's residence, 10 Downing Street. Well, this, this isn't. isn't. This isn't. The, the interior isn't. Um, they, they, were, they were scared if we actually portrayed the interior. It would yes. give away lots of highly secure uh, plans to potential uh, terrorists. So we said we would just show the door. And but reveal that they actually sit on space hoppers, <laughs> That's not right. chairs. Yes. Well, this is Amanda's house. <laughs> That's what it is. This is a big house out in Hillingdon where we... It was like a complex, really. You turned it into a complex for the film. Didn't you? Yeah. Lots of different it's sets. New and bits and old bits. So the old bits were great to Ma, use as um, as as Downing Street. And and then the new bit that of that Minister? same house, we we built um, the Ministry for International you Affairs here. That you see, they wanted to take that um, that ladder, that step ladder away. It was a mistake. They wanted to take it away before we started filming. And I just thought, well, no, you do go into government buildings where there are bits of the ladder lying around. Yeah. <laughs> and stuff like that. Mainly the health and safety executive. So yes. children's drawings in the background there, is yes. that meant to imply that Malcolm has children? He's got nephews and nieces. Oh, thank God. <laughs> you just don't like the idea of Malcolm ever having sex. No. 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 But he mentions it later on in the film. Very, he says, I, I do all my shaking in five-star hotels. And it implies an outside life that, that you kind of don't want to know about because it means that this poison is being spread to the rest of the world somehow. <laughs> I don't know, Peter, have you thought, does, does Malcolm have uh, in, any interests outside the world of politics? Or? I've begun to think about it a lot more because people ask me all the yes. time. It seems to be a question. They, they, it is mysterious to them yes. what this background is. Um, so I have tried to think about what it might be. Yachting? Is it yachting? <laughs> <laughs> no, I think it's fairly... Kitten rearing? No, I think he's got a, 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 a partner who puts up with a lot of Filth. crap, and I yeah. think that there's a limit to how long they're going to be together Probably. and all of that sort yeah. of stuff. And, uh, but I don't know how useful all this thought is no. to actually doing it, no. or to this DVD commentary, because <laughs> none of it features, apart from those <laughs> pictures which you've just <laughs> brought up. Now, this is uh, Simon Foster and uh, Judy in action, and um, this scene was sort of almost like a little overture in terms of seeing Malcolm at full flow so that, you know, the audience can get a measure of him and as well as allowing us to see uh, the relationship between the minister and his press secretary here. Oh, and yes, and I, I, I seem to remember also it was, um, it was very difficult to get the opening edited. He was to come up with a cut of those first five, six minutes because there's such a lot of information, so many new characters, and there's three or four different plot strands all happening quite quickly. And, and it took me months to get the, the right pacing of it. And, 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 and In fact, I think we reshot this scene, didn't we? We did. We did reshoot this scene. We reshot this scene to make it clearer that you were a couple and yeah. you know, that, all that sort of thing. Did you, um, because you very often have uh, the names of the characters and their position yes. come up when we first yes. encounter them, even as late into the film as uh, Jamie's first century. Was that yes. was that as a decision to help you with that process, or did you no, always think that's what you were going no, to do? No, no, that was there to, to, to make it clear what people were and who they were, but without us having to otherwise spend, you know, a minute explaining who they yeah. were verbally. Yeah. Um, because whenever we do anything in the script that's a major plot point, it's always nice to try and bury it under jokes and, yeah. and incidentals, really. So it doesn't feel like you're hearing the mechanics of the story. I love Chris's anorak. <laughs> I have. Uh, I wasn't paid for the film, but I did get to keep all the clothes. That was. I was insistent on that because I love this wardrobe. You love man-made fibers. I actually feel genuinely weaker as soon as I put. Almost. I mean, I can't be physically weaker than I am, but but you know, I feel less powerful as soon as you, I put you are, stuff in, on. In reality, you are much more stylish. Very unflattering lens. <laughs> Jamie. <laughs> no, uh, 
that I remember spending a lot of time in the edit trying to, because there are about three or four conversations going on at once here, aren't there? And it took forever trying to cut something together that um, made sense, but allowed you to hear two conversations going on at once and, 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 and allow one word from one conversation to pop up in a gap in the other conversation so that your brain could have enough time to work out what was being said in both. I remember we did quite, we concentrated on that quite a lot in the um, additional dialogue sessions. You know, when yeah. after a film's made and you have to come in and um, all the words that you didn't yes. make very clear in the first place, you have to go and say them into a microphone over and over again. That's right, yes. Uh, yes. Watching your own face blown up in front of you. It's quite, but it was that scene we spent most time on, I think. And the opening for the film I remember in the edit took an awful long, long time to get right because there are about three stories we're all trying to start off very, very quickly. There's the Malcolm and the minister and the interview. There's there's you. Uh, there's there's um, there's Toby and uh, foreign office and the relationship there. And there's and there's Judy and Simon coming in. And there was these three things going on. And it just took forever trying to get the right. M mix of elements in the first five minutes. So is it, 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 how much relation does it bear to the script that we went in uh, with in terms of... Well, it's all stuff that was in the script, but it's just sure, the order, it was getting the order. I mean, yeah. yeah, yeah. There was one point where it opened, I think it opened on Judy doing her... Um, her uh, walking, power walking across, oh, across the... blisters doing that. Did you? Did you? No. We never used it. No, sorry about that. That's OK. Put the blisters on eBay. <laughs> <laughs> I could give you my old compute plasters <laughs> to auction. We did take that over and over again, didn't we? We kept striding up Lambeth Bridge with you power mm. walking. Yeah. Me yeah. sweating. Oh, yeah. Remember I remember that, cos I... I had yeah. to wait for you to finish before yeah. Sorry yeah. About it took ages. And then rush hour came and I was wearing lycra. Yeah, yeah we did get some funny looks. <laughs> yeah. Well, because the camera stayed where it was and we ended up yards and yards and yards away. Yeah, shouting at each other. Shouting at each other. There's a bit actually later on where where um, uh, Olivia Poulet, who plays uh, Emma and I, shouting at each other. And uh, oh, yes. uh, we we walked out of a pub at the, and uh, oh, somebody right passed right. us and went, oh, and they went, oh, it's the thick of it. <laughs> <laughs> so, yes, Tom. No, I was just that bit there. We've just had yeah. the bit about Jane Austen with the no. yes. lubricated horse cock. That's just... Oh. <laughs> lubricated horse cock aside for a second. Are you saying I'm now no longer allowed? No, it's just very good. I just want I was going to say who wrote that, who All came right. up with that. But, but we've also missed your funny, your funny ad libs in there. <laughs> About Shall we rewind then and see yes. see them again? <laughs> <laughs> so how did it feel, Tom? Can we, uh, in the middle of uh, because this this sort of opening scene is is meant to be a little display of of Malcolm at full pelt as yes. a sort of overture in a kind of way for like what his his yes. range is, you know. And you had to sort of withstand it all. That was. Mm. Yeah, I remember we did laugh at each other and I remember Peter's face laughing because we have worked together before a long time ago so it was funny to be playing two new characters. Yes. Before we were both playing rather effete Victorian people. And we didn't who, laugh at who all. Who were both in love. <laughs> yeah. Did you have face furniture? And the, What is that? What is face furniture? No. What is that? Bushes. Oh, uh, no, 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 I don't think we did. But we were both in love with Oscar Wilde and there weren't many jokes. Yes. Whereas this... <laughs> <laughs> so there we were... I, and I just... I do remember trying to not... Thinking that if I laughed it was probably a good thing because that would be... a defence against in character that would be yeah. a defence against Malcolm yes if I if so that was sort of all right because it would seem that it would appear that it didn't hurt when he was so rude to me and then I spent the rest of the time trying to think of something to come back at him with which uh, obviously there wasn't very much of it but I that's that was what I thought I'm not just going to take all this lying down yeah <laughs> uh, so I must try and think of something to say back but it was yeah it was exciting but I think you did that very successfully it was all right it was all right did we not also reshoot all of this? Yeah. We did, because um, I, I, I like to shoot in, chrono in story order. So obviously these scenes here were some of the first scenes we shot in the film. And, and inevitably, and we've done this in the, in, the, in the thick of it as well, inevitably it takes you a day or so to just get into the character and get into the, the pace of it. Uh, so at the end of the shoot, we tend to go back and reshoot 
the opening scenes again. Did you not also... There was a shooting style thing, wasn't there? That's where you right, yes. It, which is that I kind of changed my mind about how we were going to shoot it because uh, I think we, the first time we shot it, it was just a little bit too staid and a bit too conventional. And, and when we watched the... Um, the rushes back. I just thought it'd be nice to just make it a bit more fluid. But and that a bit was more, that was about yeah. the transition from make, going from making a television series and making a film and thinking that maybe you should do it differently in terms of your shooting style and yeah. then discovering that actually it would. I made it to too stick. different, right. and and, I, and it became slightly too conventional. That the, the stuff I shot on the first day. Um, and, but what I did want to do, because it's on a big screen, I didn't want to have the camera swinging all over the place because you just feel sick yeah. if you watch something like that. Um, so this is less wobbly than the TV show, It's less show, wobbly, it? but we put more... Uh, there's more movement in terms of zooms, zooms in and out, right, to, right. to just get that um, sense of movement and, and so on. OK. So had you uh, worked with Jamie, D uh, DOP? Oh, yes. Oh, on the thick of it, yes, right, okay. yes. Um, and we spent a little bit of time with the cameras before the shoot, just doing some test shoots just to, to try and develop the style. Um, but I didn't want anything too overt. And, so uh, did anything from your first lot of the first lot of things that we shot end up in... I think it probably did, I can't remember. Yeah. I'm sure it did. I'm sure it did. Yeah. This bit was interesting because the outside of that door, yes. which is that building just going off Birdcage Walk, Since the, the, the very, very... No, this... This is in London, isn't it? Yes, yeah, it's just it engineers. Yeah. That's right. Oh, sorry, I was just interrupting to say that's an American. Oh, that's, that's an American. American. Oh, yeah. yeah, that's more interesting conversation. No, no, actually. carry on. That's I just brilliant. wanted to, to mark. Well, no, that the <laughs> steps, the stone steps there, yeah, can all mechanically slide into just a, a wheelchair access thing, mm -hmm. which is oh, yes, very that. James Bond. Yes. And I pointed that out as I've driven past it to uh, many cab drivers ever since, <laughs> who are all fascinated. And then they tell you what the Nazis would have used that building for. That's usually what... Military That's Whiteley's, isn't it? <laughs> it's everything, isn't it? Whiteley's, Hitler's favourite building, was going to be his oh, HQ for what, ruling England. Hitler had England. plans for Whiteley's. Apparently he yeah. loved Whiteley's. Did you like ice That's what, on the Martian Parsons website, interesting facts of West London. Did he have London. plans for the Brent Cross shopping centre? <laughs> <laughs> so this is all... Uh, yes, we're still in London, and but this is our first chance to see the American cast, and... Uh, that's and I think that was their first day as well, really, wasn't it? I don't know. It was their, their, their <laughs> very first day was... Um, they didn't do anything. They were going around in a bus outside the British Museum. That's right, in a oh, scene yeah. that was then cut. <laughs> so it was their first proper day, I think. That was yeah. the yeah. day where we all had a terrible allergy. Oh, yes. Oh, yeah. Do you remember? No. For the plane everyone, trees. Yeah, everyone was crying Oh, with yes, the allergy. trees. There was a tree dropping um, Evil, what, what turned out pollen. to be um, government-sponsored bacteria <laughs> bombs on any satire against them. <laughs> um, <laughs> when we did this scene outside on yes. the, by the d defence bit, yes. the, um, a whole lot of those soldiers who wear the big top hats, what are they called? The big bear woolly bear skins. Bear skins. They walk past and Mimi Kennedy, who's playing assistant secretary of state, got very, very excited and then a bit upset because she wasn't allowed to go out of the window and look. <laughs> so I took a picture on my mobile phone and then came that's, and showed the, her she was thrilled that's the sort of group dynamic we we yeah. fostered fostered uh, <laughs> yeah. Foster. uh and your character is simon foster simon and, foster. and you know and you took it to heart um well yeah. oh, i love this bit <laughs> really fine. love this this might be this is my top five moments in this film oh, really? definitely that doesn't mean that um what i said won't change and we shot this loads and loads and loads of times and, and it was only well into the edit that i saw this take We'd been so busy looking at close-ups and, and shots, and I was just thinking, well, there's something kind of not quite right about seeing him at the back of the room, you know, and, and I, th I remember Billy just going, oh, well, there's this take here, and I saw it, and I just said, well, that's the one! Yeah, <laughs> there's a great thing I hadn't noticed before, there's a woman, one of the extras in the, in the foreground turns yeah. to another one, yeah. right at the end of what Simon was saying, with a kind of, what an idiot, <laughs> yes. look on her face. Really I was just thinking yeah. what good essays. They were know? good, they were all really? great, yeah. They were, uh, because sometimes, again, when you're in an edit and you're watching take after take, uh, again and again and again, you suddenly start noticing oh, 
<laughs> Someone who says nothing at the back, but who's just staring into the camera. And you just say, oh, I can't now use that take because yeah. someone's staring, you know. That happens on the, on, on the Ridley Scott Gladiator DVD commentary. Oh, really? He comes right to the very end of it uh -huh. where there's a big fight <laughs> right after I after <laughs> think was killed and all that stuff. Yeah. And he goes, look, there's an extra in the back. And he points out the extra. Yeah, yeah. And he, it spoils the whole scene for you for the rest <laughs> of your life. <laughs> What's the extra doing? Staring Looking right at the camera. He's taking a piss. This is the joke. <laughs> 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 Shouldn't we say that this yeah. is that scene where they, they improvised for about oh, 25 minutes and we were all in awe? Yeah. 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 And we were all watching from yeah. up, up we above. We were watching from above. The so so killer. Can we start again? They're really good. And when they I were was, incredible. When I was casting in New York, I saw Zach and I, I saw Anna and I really liked them. And I asked uh, Meredith Tucker, who was our casting agent in New York, to get them both together the next day because I said I wanted to see them together. And they came in and I just asked them to, to basically riff against each other uh -huh. and they went on for about half an hour and it was i mean i i could have stopped them after 10 minutes but i was enjoying it so much but i thought there we are that's uh that's chad and liza <laughs> and zach actually comes from a a new york comedy improv troupe called um the upright citizens brigade they're quite they're quite a famous lot aren't they, they Amy are. Polo and all I that think a lot of people the, come out the original them, yeah. UCB. they live in yeah. a gypsy caravan and go up and down the east coast with Dogs and Harlequins hats on. No, they don't. Luff. <laughs> <laughs> Ding. I, I like oh, the idea of Zach with a Harlequins <laughs> hat on. <laughs> He's truly brilliant. And Mimi was the last Karen I saw. I'd, I'd spent a while in in New York and then in LA casting for Karen and didn't hadn't found one. And I was due to leave on the Saturday afternoon to go home. And I said to Meredith, the casting agent. I haven't found her yet, and, and she said, "Look, I'll quickly organise. When do you go? Two o'clock on uh, on Saturday. Right, let's do another session tomorrow morning. I know it's Saturday, but let's round up a few more people." Saturday. Mimi was the last one. Came in about twelve thirty. I was about I was about I was about to head off, and she was great. Yeah, she was great. Yeah. She just she got a way of making um, lines sound natural that's extraordinary. Mm. It's just extraordinary. This was where the evil trees were dropping their evil pollen. <laughs> the evil cluster pollen. London plane trees, they have a sort of... Uh, fur balls. Fur balls, yeah, yeah. And, and just getting in the equipment and everything. And they throw them at your lungs. That's two stories you've told about getting to the end of your tether and almost giving up and almost despairing and then at the very last minute, mm. the right thing coming out which is a lesson in perseverance and uh, <laughs> just grit. <laughs> grit. If you so, just... The moment we're about to give up is often the moment where everything comes, comes together. I'm hoping that'll be the case with this commentary. <laughs> <laughs> when we shot that last yeah. sequence, we were being papped. Do you remember I beg your pardon? Papped? papped? Yeah. yeah. What? There was a lone <laughs> man with a very long lens standing on the traffic island oh, outside I see. the British Museum. I thought Museum. it was some sort of bodily, some kind of therapy. Yeah, we were being We had <laughs> tiny people behind us at yeah. all moments. He was standing over the road there. Yeah. Taking oh, taking photos. Yeah. All oh, right. But you must get that a lot. Do you get that a lot? Or... Um, no. 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 <laughs> <laughs> oh. Dear. Mm. Overacting. This, this we reshot this. Yeah. <laughs> did we? But when we did it originally, this was our first day, wasn't yes. it? Yes. Yeah. You know I'm against talking up the war. You're against talking up the war? Is that why you said... Clay? There was a whole lot more in this scene, wasn't there? I seem to remember. The Three Stooges, is that Three Stooges, Stooges. Benny Hill. Benny Hill, yeah. Stuff. Yeah, I guess he says. Yeah. Uh, but sometimes you do a scene and... and I mean, I find I, I've no idea as we're going into actually what the key moment is going to be, what the funny bit is going to be, you know. And sometimes on paper you think, oh, that's the funny line and that's the bit. And and yeah. and actually you shoot and it, it tends to be something else, you know. So in the edit you can just go straight to that bit. And Do you ever find yourself sort of constructing those moments because you've got you've you've got huge amounts of material that you can work yeah. with, including reactions yes. and so on. Yes. So is it possible? I mean, maybe that's just the thing you do as a kind of band aid last. It's very difficult to know what, what you're going to end up with in, in the edit. You know, it's as as we're shooting it, I, I'm just more aware of making sure we've got that moment mm. that's really funny, and then the next moment of script, make sure we've got that moment funny in a take and all that kind of thing. But really, you go into the edit not quite knowing what it is that's going to, you know. But do you have any um, sort of visual grammar? That you feel none, you have to. none whatsoever. No, but, <laughs> no, no. no, but in a sense, I mean, you must have some 
sense about what you have to get. I'm just interested yeah. in whether or yeah. not you come in and say, say OK, you, you're going to let people do their thing and let them do the script, but there must be certain things that you must think, i, I got to cover that. Well, it's more... I, I kind of like to see it all on camera because we tend to, although we rehearse it and line bash it and stuff, I, I, we tend to shoot the rehearsal really. And I partly, I, I think that's to see what happens and see if something comes up that no one was planning. But also, it's only when I see it on the the screen that I can then start having ideas about how I really want to see it, you know. And sometimes I'll look at it and I'll think, oh, there's something funny about you all being like in that last scene with everyone in Malcolm's office. There's something funny about you all being squashed up against one wall in this yeah. massive room. But so let's make sure we see a big sh wide but, shot of, of that but, happening. But in a more sort of housekeeping -y kind of yes. way. For instance, we just went to the State Department there. Yes. So we had a lot of wide shots yes. of the environment. Yes. So are you very conscious of adhering to, to some of that, that, that basic kind of grab? Well, sometimes, yes, just to make it clear what's going on. Yes, you have to. I kind of like, once we've established where we are, of then moving in and, and, and being quite intimate with everyone. But... but just being able to signal visually where we are in, in half a second rather than having to, you know, write a whole paragraph explaining where we are. Tom, you look... You, I'm just marvelling at Mimi's American accent. She's got it down <laughs> pat, hasn't she? Because she's actually Polish. Yeah. <laughs> Mimi's very politically active, so she, this, is, she yes. loved this because she's yes. a proper kind of really uh, left-wing Democrat. Yes. And very active in California. She took us on a tour when we were in Washington. She took us all around the Senate and Congress and stuff. With, With Dennis David. Kucinich. Yes. Oh, With Dennis Kucinich, former, uh, former Democrat. You called him David all the way through. Because <laughs> you turned up late, Tom. That's what. Yeah. Damn. No, through the junket yesterday. Oh, oh no. Oops. But the yes, most we went around uh, Congress and the State Department with David Kucinich, who was the President of the United States. <laughs> Uh, after, uh, oh dear. You didn't call it Washington, B.C., by any chance, <laughs> just by mistake. Hey, that's, you could pitch that sitcom idea to Oh, HBO, that's great, Washington, isn't it? Washington, B.C. We opened the Flint Yeah. 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 Um, it's a metaphor for, uh, the, the, because they're, uh, they're dinosaurs. Uh, I, I don't, my American turned into Cornish there. Did you hear that? No, Talking yes. of accents. Yes. 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 Give, give high praise here. Yeah. Yes. Enzo. To another member of the Scottish Italian <laughs> mafia, yeah. Enzo here, who I uh, who does a perfect it American, isn't it? Because sometimes you can you know when an English actor is doing an American accent, don't you? Sorry, a British actor is doing. It's usually an English actor. He's doing. He's, uh, <laughs> uh, doing, you know, doing an American accent. You you do a lot of American. I don't. don't I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, it's, it's no, true. Scottish people are better at it, and Irish people, well, and had Welsh to, people. They've had to learn an accent originally already, haven't they? So they're better at it. Right. I always used to think Europeans were a lot cleverer than Brits because they could speak foreign languages so well. <laughs> Whereas my French is terrible. I really did. I always feel they're more sophisticated for that reason. Yeah. And then you find out they can speak perfect English too. No, David Rashi here is... Uh, is uh, in fact, Enzo, Enzo was really excited, partly because he knew he was going to have to stand up to James Gandolfini in a scene that's coming later, but principally, he told me, because he was going to play with David Rashi, who was his... Hero, he was really into Sledgehammer, yes. so, which was yes. David's thing in the 80s. He was brilliant, Dave. There's, there's a dryness to him that yes. takes quite a while to get used to, I think, <laughs> in, the, in the character, yes. in the way he plays yeah. the character. And he's very funny in United 93. <laughs> Because he plays the pilot in United 93. <laughs> I was amazed to really? discover that. Oh, does he? Yes, I'm oh, not really? joking. He was, he's the pilot in United 93. All oh, right. Is there a bloopers tape on the <laughs> DVD of, of United 93? There must be a bloopers Let's tape. rock. No, sorry. Let no. me take that again. <laughs> but he's, is he funny in it? Like you no, just said, that it is just... not a funny film. Yeah. <laughs> well, I know, I know. That's what you just said, I'm not joking, so I thought maybe no. they shot three different endings. Comic they, they, they shot three different endings. There's an upbeat ending. <laughs> tested better. Tested better in. I think uh... we should draw this conversation to a close. <laughs> I. Uh, uh, no, here we are. We're in this little room. Sometimes we write scenes simply because we've noticed something on the set that we quite like. For example, the fact that the blinds were controllable in Judy's office and not in Simon's office 
we started riding the set. And that little uh, ornament that um, makes a noise, they were all set to come in and put lots of blue tack underneath it and all sorts of things to change it to make n not a noise. And I just thought, no, that's quite, that's quite funny that it makes a noise. That's magic. That's the magic of the magic. In Alien, for example, the, the, the John Hurt had a monster in his stomach. Just that's how he came to work that day. And, and Ridley Scott, no, let's keep that in. Let's keep that in. Um, and of course, they didn't keep it in, did they, viewers? It all came out. So um, A lot of Alien was improv. A lot. That's, that's not really a spaceship. No. No, we ran out of money uh, as we were making this scene, and I paid for the um, backdrop that you can see through the windows here. I paid for it out of my own fee. Uh, eventually, I got the money back, but there was a scary moment. I thought I wouldn't get it. And you can't see it in the final film. It's clever really the way do she does that, isn't it? <laughs> Did you really do yeah. that? Yeah. Amazing. Don't you think it's clever the way Mimi does that? Does that, yeah. With her teeth? Yeah. It's really we had a little capsule that... Uh, this is our alien moment, actually. Yeah. When some blood comes from her mouth. It's Did they all know that was going to happen? Or, or, uh, <laughs> yeah. A total surprise. I can see it on their faces. <laughs> I cannot stand to see a woman bleed from the mouth. <laughs> Reminds me of country and western music, which I cannot abide. <laughs> that stuff is just oh. Chad wow. just laughing so away. I didn't hear that line that he says, Go Buffy, you belong to the Vampire Queen now. <laughs> yes. I didn't hear that until about the third time I've seen it. Cut it. You know, how far are you with the committees? I've got there's something funny here that Mimi does when she says I'm not a monster. She, she starts sounding like Elmer Fudd. <laughs> uh, and I don't know whether it's deliberate in her part. Or whether she knew that the, the, the shot made it look like, uh, you know, a, a cartoon monster. Um, planning committee. Find out if it really is that. Um, okay, well, I, 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 I go and do that. You're not going to shout at me if I go and do that, are you? I'm not a monster, Liza, okay? Will you stop implying that I'm such a monster? It's the implying. Implying. Fuck. Oh, hey. And Anna herself, I think, had worked in Washington at some point because she, she took a, a break from acting and, and ended up doing journalism. And I think she worked was it in a senator's office. Or she, said, she said she had a little bit of experience working in Washington. I think she was in that pressure group about the killer bees. They're trying to come out, Lord. <laughs> How old was she when she worked there? She was 12, yes. Yeah. yes. This was... It was straight after my girl. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I figured. In which she was killed by killer bees. She was yeah. killed by killer bees. <laughs> so that was, I, I was trying to do a joke there. But I know, I got I, it. I shan't try again. I did. So many references. It's a tough crowd. <laughs> <laughs> so this is when, now we, uh, although the, the State Department, I have to say, was all, uh, was in a sports centre in North London. We, uh, that's all a cheat. Uh, a lot of film, uh, uh, I, I, if anyone who hasn't seen a film before is listening to this, a lot of film is cheat. Um, it's, for example, the people in it aren't real, they're, they're sort of professionals hired to pretend to be the people that they're claiming to be. Um, but now we're actually going, I was going to say live to Washington, but uh, that, that's a lie. But um, this is us now in Washington. And it, and it was, the heat was intense really, wasn't it? When, uh, and you all had to wear suits, but it was like... Yeah, you would turn up in your shorts. I know. I, know. I like the way Tom's got his merchant ivory suit on. Yes. <laughs> That's your own, isn't it? Just in case they call. I know. <laughs> <laughs> only, only ivory can call now. Oh. <laughs> also, I'm given tremendously cheap clothes to wear of, of, of the kind of fabric that you don't want to be stuck in that kind in of... In hot torrid. Yeah. Now, we had to hang around in Washington to wait for Dick Cheney's Outriders to come and, and, and do their part. This film. Well, they are. They're real. They're real policemen. You're not allowed to use fake policemen if you're yes. if you're filming this sort of thing because that's a that's a crime impersonating a policeman. As it turns there, out. That puddle was because there'd just been a tremendous hey, storm and there. the fire engines had to come. Do you remember that? Oh yes. Are you going to say about the that guy there? He looks into the camera. Oh. Yeah. Was it that that Him. whole reception was a building site? That was the we only shoot. angle that you could shoot at <laughs> yes, where it didn't look like there was a building. Most of the reception was missing. Yes, that's right. Yes. And, and we went to that hotel because we, I, when I was doing a recce, I found this room and it had such a perfect bad view of the capital. <laughs> I want to tell the story about Chris Addison doing the most brilliant improvisation here. I just need to check that it's not in the film. <laughs> we had to improvise. Yes, it's not. And uh, What did I do? 
exciting. And I said, what sort of tree is it? And you said, because I thought, because uh, I, yeah, that was all I could think of to say. And you said, a democracy tree. <laughs> <laughs> Which I th- and I thought, wow, that is amazing. Yeah, and it's that level of pun that this is really known for. Yeah. It's mainly well, a pun-based film. Yes. It would be uh, wrong not to acknowledge that, that this is the opening scene for Mr James Gandolfini. That's right, yes, we... Um, we shot this... No, we're actually filming just to destroy the magic that we've conjured up so far in the film. Um, we shot this in North London. This is a house in North London that is doubling up as a um, posh house in Washington. But this was, yeah, this was James's first day uh, on set. And so, therefore, that was the day that all the press decided to come and all the executives <laughs> on the film oh, decided to turn up and <laughs> all the money people arrived. Did you notice the catering got better that day? It did, suddenly. It was very nice, yes. Um, and, uh, no, James was great, though, because we had... Um, uh, the way we shoot the film is with the script is... No, this is, this is where we jump back into a squash court in a sports centre in North London. So is that a set? set. That's set. Oh, that's oh, a nice set, one. yes. Very, yeah. very. Yeah. You can't yeah, see the joint. Can't see the joint at all. But I remember, like, Anna and Zach in the gallery of the squash court looking down, watching this take. Uh, oh, and wow. when the little machine starts going, they had to leave because they were <laughs> creased up. With, they weren't expecting the noise. And that see. dog is, is, is not a real dog, is it? No. You, no. 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 Oh, I thought no. they were really quiet. Yeah. Mm. No. It's a, well, it's a dead dog. Oh, yes. Uh, that we had shot for, for this shot. Mm-hmm. Um, but... Uh, <laughs> There's a shot here later on where you can't see Jim's face, and it's me. I was his body double. <laughs> we used hand. He actually broke at that point, and I, um, yeah, I used to have to stand in for him sometimes. Yeah. I noticed there that you called him Jim. I did call him Jim, yeah. That was to imply a level of familiarity to which I can't lay claim. Yeah. That is gorgeous, isn't it? Combat troops available for an invasion, according to these figures. <laughs> Thousand? Well, twelve. Twelve troops. Oh, come on, you're shitting me. I please. am shitting you. Oh, twelve thousand. Did somebody do research about all of his badges? <laughs> yeah, they're all yes. for, um, from battles from uh, other films. <laughs> uh, so the bottom row there, that's from the Clone Wars. Yes. Right. War of the Worlds. It was War, uh, War of the Worlds um, in, uh, uh, Distinguished Service yes, Medal. Yeah. Saving Private Ryan. Was, I keep wanting to ask, what, was that improvised? Or was that scripts when, when what? that 12, 12,000, I am shitting you, that was 12,000? It's sort of improvised. We, I, I kind of, I mean, in the script it said 12, and I thought 12 is not believable, but why don't they turn it into a joke about 12 right. and him trying to wipe? And this is, I love this. I kept this long, you just did this. When we said, you know, action, you did this long, long sit I was before a, getting up. A blatant attempt to increase my on-screen time, <laughs> which worked bizarrely. <laughs> First time ever <laughs> in 15 years of acting. Yeah. Now I'm wearing my pants backwards here, and I had so many fights with wardrobe. Oh really? That. I wanted to put them on backwards. I don't know why. <laughs> <laughs> there was some sort of there's some, yeah. some strange method. Is that a modesty yeah. issue, or? I would say that's what I imagine. Are you really thought. that? Scared of spillage? No, I've got two pairs of pants on. Uh, this spillage! Is the <laughs> spillage! <laughs> That's trade secrets you're giving away there. <laughs> two, two pairs of pants. Always wear two pairs of pants in a. In it's a Washington scene. tradition, though. Most people in Washington <laughs> wear two Do you think two actors pairs of pants? on the Godfather DVD commentary let slip whether they're scared of staining their pants? <laughs> uh, well, we could always listen. <laughs> 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 So, did it say in the script that you were pantless? Or was that something that... Was it that hot, or were you just... I think it did say something did like say that, yes. yes. In your underpants. But Tom, and Tom wore and then special I pants. wanted to do it as well, and it didn't say time yeah. of yeah. And you I just suddenly But you took everything it. off, Tom, except your red underpants. But those are your lucky well, pants. Well, fun. when we get to that scene, you can actually see my own black underpants. Underneath? In, un, if you're staring very... <laughs> <laughs> if you're saying at my balls in a way that only the actor playing it would, just to see, you can actually see the black underpants. Oh, that's just, just wait. That's spot the magic now. Uh, oh, there, no, there. not there. Not there. Coming up. I don't yeah. want to look. You can't make me. I think it's after Malcolm Hello. comes in. 
But Tom, you tell me that you have uh, you have a large collection of underpants going back to your school days, do, which you yes. still wear. Yeah, well, one, my favourite pair of underpants is yes. And what constitutes a favourite pair? Well, I suppose it's it's the only one that dates back to my school days, and that's that's why I love it so are they, much. Are they lucky? Are they your your lucky pants? Well, it's just in a you know an actor's life is full of changes, and it's nice to have elements of continuity. Yeah. So do you put them on on first nights and things? No. Hang on, the big pant moment I think is coming up. Spot the magic though, knowing that there's a pair of black underpants in there. Uh, that's also not a real mirror. That's uh, we had to find a very good body double for me. That's there. right. <laughs> um, Phil did. <laughs> I mean, I thought that black that you saw underneath was just mm, full-on pubic hair. That you shot in Washington, didn't you? That? Uh, no, this no, is no, uh, a pickup. Oh. There, you see it. There, you see them. Oh, How disgusting. Oh, so sorry. Dear. All right, viewers. How awful. Pause and rewind. So sorry. I'm <laughs> here. And freeze. You'll see them. This is going to become one of those notorious virals. Oh, that, I can yeah. see them again. Oh, no, you yeah, can't. No, something else. For a, a drink with her just now. Yes. And, um, and uh, oh, what was I going to Yes, I, I, I always called them your Room for Romeo Brass pants because the <laughs> Romeo Brass poster <laughs> had those big red pants on them. Here's another technical question. Yes. Do you do anything in the grading to affect the look of the film? A little bit, yes. Yes. No, absolutely. I mean, we shot this on HD and and, and uh, just because uh, I knew we were shooting very fast and we didn't want to spend too much time lighting and whatever. And then, and then it allows you, there's all sorts of options in the grade to kind of give it any kind of look that you're after. This scene was a, a reshoot scene which we shot months later. Isn't That's it? right, yeah. Yeah. That's right, because there's a massive section that I cut, which was at that um, posh uh, party that you see um, General Miller and Karen at. There was a whole sequence, you remember? We spent a whole day doing this sequence of... Malcolm and, and you and, and, and Toby at the party. Toby letting slip, let yeah, slip to a to journalist, journalist, doesn't he? At the party, yeah. And it just took about 20 minutes in the final edit, and, yeah, and uh, it, it kind of held everything up. It probably was one of our big expensive shoots as well, but um, there you go. It's quite some house. I like no, the helicopter shot. We have. The helicopter shot, that's gone. You know, they're trying to wrest the controls of an aircraft out of control. That that's gone. <laughs> uh, that's no, this is uh, actually at the Black Cat in, you in Washington. You love this day, Chris. I remember you were very, very excited On after this, this filming day. After this filming day, can you remember why? I can't remember. Was it we went we went to a baseball game? Uh, I think it was. Simply so it wasn't that. the film. No, it was this. It was the shooting of this. No, no. Uh, I, you I enjoyed it. I, was, I did. I did enjoy it, and I was. I was excited. It was, what, it was good fun. The I'm just a why? fan of that kind of music. Oh, talk. okay. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> that was actually that was shot at the Black Sorry. Cat in Washington, which is where the Washington Insiders all go to to dance to that kind of music. And and when I was researching it, we went along to one of them, and it is funny because they they all look slightly older than the band and have very neat hair, <laughs> yeah. but they're all still. Got their shirts off and going, yeah, right, yeah, come on, and all that sort of thing. And then going back to their... Uh, osteopath. Oste <laughs> yeah. <laughs> their osteopath. <laughs> and they did have uh, earplugs in as well. That's the other thing. They, they bring their that. earplugs because they've got to be able to function next day at the State Department. Yeah. Uh, that, made, that tickled me a lot. <laughs> so have you got real, real back spear? Did you no, we, we were supposed yeah. to say right, that was that was not that's non-alcoholic. You can see from the label that it's non-alcoholic. Oh, unfortunately, see, which is right. why, why uh, Christine kept trying to turn it around and we weren't having any of it. Yeah. But uh, the, just I was watching, just before when she's talking yes. to me, I'm mouthing along with her. I have a terrible habit oh, really? of mouthing along with people, not because I know her lines, because I didn't know what she was going to say. But if I'm concentrating very hard on what people say, I seem to be. That's some sort of illness. Some kind isn't of idiot. It? Yes, yes. An idiot. Yes, an idiot. Yes. I didn't really notice it until I yes. saw this film, and then I spotted myself doing it. <laughs> <laughs> and I must look rude apart from anything else. Well, we spent a lot of money <laughs> in special effects it? just trying to calm your lips down, I really. To stop you. Well, <laughs> I just I only hope that when I took my wedding, my wife took her wedding vows, I wasn't mouthing along with her. That would... <laughs> Is that why they had to shoot this in the dark? Yeah, yeah. big sexy. Oh, yeah. yeah, it was, was shot in absolute daylight and was quite torrid, but. Uh... No. It was horrendous. I kept telling you you weren't going to see it. You anything. did keep, you you kept quite... seeing me. I was quite nervous about it. Yeah. I didn't like the Was it your later. first love scene? Uh, in my life. I mean, <laughs> it was just, you know, in, a, in any context. So actually, that's not something you want to do in public, <laughs> I imagine. We've but, all been we've all been here. I mean, but I'm the world's meekest director. I hate the idea of telling people to, to, 
to, to perform with each other. Just go at if it! If they're but... happily married or partnered and, and have loved ones at home, I don't like the idea no. of, you know... No, it made me very uneasy. Well, well, long may that good. continue. Yeah. <laughs> you may find that as you become more and more experienced and successful, you become less squeamish about <laughs> oh, really? your actors to call themselves. Tom, we've got a scene for you this time. No pants. Yeah. <laughs> And you have to make sure it's their first day of shooting. Oh, really? Yeah. So they like to do that, do yeah, they? Just they like to really to... put you in the kind of make you feel really small. Uh, now, now then, yes. Watching Tom get yeah. ready for this scene was yeah. a masterclass because Sorry, you, he spent ages working out what the weakest possible, funniest way of looking weak yes. sitting down was. You turned your toes and you moved your knees together, but spent a long time working it out and it really, really worked. It's very, very funny. It it's quite a thing to see. It's framed so you can't see anything <laughs> on the waist up. No, so it's I was dying inside with laughter. It's, it's worked its way up to your face, Tom. <laughs> This is one of my favourite days filming, which is when Tom and I spent the day in uh, the State Department running about, really. Yeah, with nothing to do. That was yeah. the whole tenor of it, really, wasn't it? But I remember shooting this thinking, this, this feels funny. Um, this feels funny. This feels funny. <laughs> funny weird, funny ha-ha. Funny ha-ha. It's just the sight of you eating that um, yeah. Yeah, that, was, bun, that was fun. I did have to eat about seven of them. Yeah. And also, I had, I've got on my, on my face, they put, uh, they, they, they put for stubble, well, mm. they put um, carpet shavings. What? <laughs> yeah, it's, it's carpet fibre shavings end up on your face. Can you not grow, grow your own stubble? I'm very good at it. I'm yeah. quite talented. If I sit here and go, <laughs> long enough, it just sort of comes out. But they don't like you to do that, do they? Because they like to no. be in control. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, they, they prefer stunt stubble. My my my, uh, my stubble isn't unionised. All oh, right, uh, yeah. Yeah. they want unionised maverick. stubble. You, you've got yeah. maverick stubble. <laughs> it's black legs. This we did about three or four takes of this bit, mm. uh, and, and the bit where we went back to the chairs. And th th I think that's my favourite improvising of of the whole shoot because we everything was it was different every time. It was right, yes. different every time. And, and none of it ended up in the film. I think some of it's in the deleted <laughs> scenes, actually. Okay. Yeah. One of the most important moments of my career. Thanks. You're a legend. <laughs> Willy Banjo. Also, Willy good, good to hear that for the first time in there. <laughs> no, that was just the beginning. Do you think? I mean, were we going back in there? Or? I don't know. We barely said hello. This is interesting because, actually, we shot this with Tom in Washington and, and Chris in London and, and then CGI'd them together. It. Yeah. It wasn't yeah. easy because there was yeah. a delay, wasn't there? There was the a satellite. delay, yeah. So we really had to anticipate what each other was saying. Yeah. And in fact, I'm playing Tom's part here and yeah. Tom's playing my part yeah. because of the way that the... I think because of the way the wires were... It's just to do with the time zones. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> ah, no. Everybody's favourite. No, the White House didn't let us in. <laughs> but where, but, but in? we filmed this in the building next to the White House. This was at a building called. It was something like the headquarters of the Daughters of the American Revolution. Oh yes, just down wow. the street. That's right. Yeah. Um, which is a sort of it has big public records of, of families, and 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 you're a daughter of the American Revolution if you can trace your family back to someone who was involved in the American Revolution. That's right. Okay. You know, and you're a woman, otherwise you can't be a daughter. Yeah, um, kind of... But this is right next to the White House, so we got the same views that the White House gets down, looking down in Washington, and you can see the Washington Monument through the windows and, and that sort of thing. I didn't have to pay out of my own money for the Washington Monument. Oh, good. There. He's so, yes. crucially... No, yes. Yeah, how, crucially, how old is he? He is about 27, I think, 27, no. 28. He's a baby. And um, so he <laughs> he's older than he looks, in fact. Yes. But brilliant, brilliant bit of cast. And I think Johnny, I think he came from the Upright Citizens Brigade as well, actually. I think he was one of the ones I... It was absolutely roasting. It was, wasn't it? So hot. Yeah. And, and you had to stay in a suit and run around Washington a That's lot right. on that very hot. And my day. suit, my shirt, remember, was absolutely wet. We yes. had to they had, they had to have extra shirts because yes. when we were running around, because it was a heat wave. Yeah. Whilst we whilst we were shooting this, this is when um, uh, not this bit, but when we were in Washington. That's when uh, Hillary Clinton was there doing her uh, her campaign. Um, no, campaign. no, her um, her speech of uh, you win. 
her you Oh, saying to Obama, Obama you've been, I, I'm pulling out. Yeah. yeah, there was a lot of that. Actually. There was a lot going on. We had yeah. McCain in our hotel. And yes. It was very exciting. He's actually an extra in the State Department. You can see, if you look very closely, you'll see McCain walk by. Yeah. Uh, do you know the body of Henry Kissinger is kept stuffed in the State Department? And, and he's they, not and, and, they, and, and they wheel it out every, um, every uh, November the 1st. Uh -huh. Kissinger Day. Kissinger Day. Yeah. yeah. I'm thrown by this, uh, this stubble story that you've told. <laughs> Oh, and also, I have glycerin, glycerin on my face, which they, which stands in for, um, for the gem, kind of general sheen of sweat that I would have simply had by being in an unbelievably stuffy mm. room for. Yes, do you know? Months later. Months later. Yeah, months months later. Later. This was a reshoot. <laughs> yeah. Oh, was it? Yeah. Because yeah. you were hopping the first time, were you? And using <laughs> the one leg. <laughs> <laughs> I told you. I said at the time. <laughs> this is probably our only. Um, uh, love Actually moment in, in the, we see London scenes from tourist London life in the background yeah. really yeah, great moments oh, yeah. that's great obviously moment. not a reshoot one half the Peter's got half the yeah, conversation so what was uh, yeah there was just a different conversation I we think cut them in. we originally did it and I was in a toilet cubicle that's right changing yeah. changing into my lycra which I have but to tell you but was it the same you, dialogue more or less yeah yeah getting changed into that lycra in a toilet cubicle, I, I think I pulled a muscle. I think we can hear it, actually. Yeah, tearing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and that's why we had to reshoot. Did it's you hear about the, the prawn who went to disco? The what, sorry? The, the prawn who went to disco. No. Pulled a muscle. <laughs> <laughs> Peter kept our spirits up throughout the, <laughs> throughout the show. <laughs> no, I think here you can... Uh, oh, I, I kind of... I, I, I think... Chris, I think you yeah. start to yeah. corpse here. You start to giggle, I think. I do. Where? So, where? Just well, you'll see, I can't actually answer Tom straight properly. No, so you don't um, do I don't need to do... Look at that. Things. We're all watching. So I'll just see you there, Toby. Do you need to... Do no, you, do you no, need no. To, I don't need the, the, the restroom. All right. OK. Yeah. Uh, Hang on, I think it's coming out. I think, I think we can just see you <laughs> trying yeah. to stifle oh, yeah. her. Right, yeah. Great. Wait round here. When they come out, we'll, we'll follow them again. <laughs> there are a number of times that that happened. Oh really? Oh well, that's yeah, the only one yeah. I've spotted. Yeah. No, not in the film, I don't think. Oh, right. But in the um, in the mm. uh, shoot. We're now in Crouch End here. <laughs> Is that Crouch End? Malcolm's Town Hall. Hall, yeah. Crouch Crouch Town Hall. Town. Malcolm's running around Angel Washington, but uh, everyone else, meanwhile, is, is in Crouch End. And this is where I live, so I was yeah. very thrilled to yeah. come along here and. Uh, I used to live near that. Yeah. It's very close to uh, Nielsen, isn't it, or Crippin, or one of those mass murders? Nielsen, yes, Cranley well, Gardens. Mm. You know, the Muswell Hill Cannibal, away. as it's locally known. But it's not the way I like to think of it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I thought yes. you were going to say it's near Dunn's the Baker's. Or I can't <laughs> believe there's people all want, want, having cups of coffee and going to Dun, yeah, Dunn's the Baker's and not realising that James Gandolfini and all these people That's were right. just yeah. Yeah. feet away from them. And this is based on our research. We went to sort of some research on the Pentagon and so on, and, and they, have a, they have a big room in the Pentagon where they sit down and talk about where they're going to attack next. And the table is used as a, as a table tennis table, and you still see the, the net up and, the, you know, and all these high-powered generals around it. And these were fantastically out-of-date maps. I seem to remember Yugoslavia on, oh, they? <laughs> and most of them were coloured pink to indicate <laughs> our, the British Empire. Our territories. Yes. The boy from The Shining. He knows things. Don't make me pump Chad. No, Come on, I'm making you pump Chad. <laughs> Go on. Was there not a scene where he did pump Chad? Yeah, we, yes. went, we had a yeah. massive long improvisation, and I had to eat very garlicky meatloaf. That's right. That's <laughs> nine. That's in the more. deleted scenes. That was really good fun. And this thing that I mean, everyone sort of picked up on this lemon difficult, difficult lemon difficult moment. But I seem to remember that came. That was the end of the day. It, and we this was a let's just do this for fun, we'll never use it, I yeah. think, were your words. And we just did one take of it, didn't we, using this lemon difficult line? That's just because it would be so amusing to think that you might actually say this, and then, but yeah, it won't be in the film. Mm. So again, you know. Again, the same the thing. The same thing. Just when you're giving up. Yeah. So you, children, any children <laughs> watching this, and, and really you shouldn't be, it's a 15, come on. Um, uh, 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 th that's the lesson, really. It's it just, is. It's, it's just carry on. Persevere. Persevere, 
and you will end up getting a line right in a, 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 <laughs> you know, a small-scale film about politics in Washington. Or you could give up earlier. Or you could give up earlier and not bother making the but film. Then giving up would be right at the start. <laughs> If this theory was to be tested. If at first you don't succeed, move on to something else <laughs> <laughs> that is within your range of ability. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Aim lower. Now, James, James always enjoyed kind of trying to do something with Miller, not really being part of the, you know, just having a mind slightly diverted by what he sees around him, so started fiddling around with the, um, the ping-pong table. Now, here we go. This is the one. So this is... Um, yeah, this we just shot this take at the very end of the day, didn't we? And are you being made to sit? Uh, what are those metal things? It's a table up. Turn That's, uh, turn Tom table. has to be kept upright at some times, <laughs> and he has a, a very sophisticated counterweight system. Most of the film that's been CGI'd out, but we are at a budget <laughs> uh, budget cut. Okay, it just looked the most plausible scene. Uh, I just like that look there you give of like I'm really at my depth here. Just before that, yeah. in the in the script, yeah. uh, Tom's character Simon is um, uh, texting Toby, saying, "We're in the loop, baby." That's right. So yes. the, the title yes. of the film is contained within a moment that was in fact cut. Cut. Yes, and you get the text as you're stuck talking to Chad, That's eating right. his meatloaf. All cut. All cut. It's been savage, I have to say. Uh, now this is in the toilets at the Royal Festival Hall in London. Am I spoiling the magic? I, I, no. I probably am. No, you're just no. indicating no, where people can go for really spoiling? lovely and well-decorated toilets. That's right. This was a scene that we did. It didn't come... This also didn't come together, didn't come together. We were in trouble here, and Peter was being absolutely hilarious in the corridor. You were doing extending... Uh, yeah. riff, not to on, be a, on camera. You were doing your, <laughs> your best cruise in the world joke. When everyone was in stitches. Also, my mother was on the set. That's right. That's right. My yeah. mother was... Sure viewers, this is possibly interesting my mother was visiting and i i couldn't act at all with her there <laughs> and it was only after she went that i was able to contribute to the to the scene that we were doing because i felt like should i bill her for the co <laughs> cost of the overrun that day then no the it was the last day of them. it was the last day of Principal filming actually of the country. yes that's right that was the last but day did, we, we went out to washington uh, and in fact, I felt quite because it was we couldn't quite concentrate. Could we? It was a, we'd all sort of. Do you remember? No, yeah. there's nothing to be. This said. scene, yeah. drink yes, been this scene so. was added after. Yes, Armando and Jamie, the DOP, and I were coming back from um, the uh, Air and Space Museum out by Dulles Airport, uh -huh. and I remarked that, pointing at the Washington Monument, if you pull that out, America deflates, and then you, then you. Then I, the whole scene came about. I, I, I emailed the writers and said, right, it's competition time. <laughs> Chris has come up with this line, and we think it would be quite a good scene to wrap everything up in Washington. You've got a day to come up with something. And, uh, and then I, we compiled this scene, the script for that scene, out of all the emails that came back. I love uh, this. This is so, so like the real thing, isn't is it? That's a super bit of physical comedy there. There's a return <laughs> to... Uh... <laughs> I like but, uh, I sorry. like the sling detail. I think that just adds. Well, well, uh, well Joel Jerry rang up and said, "I've done my arm in. Uh, uh, shall I just wear my sling?" And I just said, "Well, you would, wouldn't you? Yeah. If it was real life, you would." But also uh, another little technical uh -huh. thing here is that you've gone from very warm colours to very cool colours. That is a little. Thank you. Yes, but we did. We did. Yes, there was a little palette that we kind of had in our head as we were. Um, and it's dead things. symbolic. Those things look like gallows, don't they? Oh, oh, that light oh, shot. Yeah, yeah. I think you're a genius. <laughs> <laughs> no, here's uh, you can see Steve Coogan in the background here, and uh, and it was really nice. Uh, I, we we hadn't really done any filming together since uh, Alan Partridge, and uh, it was. What was that, Alan Partridge? Alan Partridge, it was, he was, uh, he was, you know those TV presenters you see, and somehow you think, oh, they're slightly rubbish, aren't they? Yeah. We thought it would be funny to come up with some kind of cartoon-ish right. character who uh, was like one of those. I, I watched one of those guys once, and he ended up shooting someone in a chat show. Yes. One, well, he was a bit like that, wasn't No, he? that was real. And then we based the character on, 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 on him. him. Yeah. Is yeah. his tash real? <laughs> That's made out of carpet. No, no. <laughs> no, Steve, Steve it was funny because once Steve said he would uh, come and do the part, we had spent lots of time on the phone because he was in the middle of filming something else. So he had like one day off. So we knew we had just one shot at this, but we spent a lot of time on the phone 
sort of fleshing out this character. And he was very, very adamant that he should have a moustache and a cap. And um, it, was, it was funny just... And, and then the idea was to come up with someone who you thought was going to be trouble but never actually never actually did hit you, but you just were worried he would. And, in fact, he never does. He never does kind of lash out. And, and Steve wanted this... Um, he wanted this thing of he wanted to walk up to Simon and Toby at the end as if he was going to punch them in the face, but, in fact, to shake their hand. That was He was very clear in his head that that would be a funny moment. It's the determination it's, and energy yeah. he does it with. Yeah. It yeah. looks like he's on a mission. Yes, yes, to, to deck Quite one unnerving. of you. Yeah. Yeah. It's a hint of psychosis, that That's works. right, yeah. 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 So that's a Dulux shade, isn't it? <laughs> White with a hint of psychosis. <laughs> So here he comes, here comes the moment, I think, is that right? The striding towards ready to deck, but actually to shake hands. That's uh, Joe Scanlon as well, by the way, yes. who's mm. there, who fans of the television. Well, this business of the National Trust, Steve had worked out in his head that what the biography was of this, because he, he launched into a whole thing in the improv about how he organises events at National Trust buildings. <laughs> You know, he, he's the guy who puts the marquees up. <laughs> so this is all this stuff is all off script now, isn't it? This is all, all you lot just mucking about. Here we go. Here's, here's the move. Yeah! <laughs> he swings his whole body around, leaves yeah. with his head. <laughs> look in your face. Yeah. Let's go and have a good look at that wall. Right. Four more constituents. I can remember, though, that he would, he would go over the... No, no. Oh, sorry. I can remember that he would go over the opening line of his uh, of what he was saying to Tom yes. over and over again. Even after we sh shouted action, he would say, "Your wall, your wall, your wall," until he got everything right, and then would launch into the thing. Yeah. It was quite extraordinary to see. It was amazing. Now, Tom, I remember this bit as we were taking it, because you suddenly are very, very tense, and uh, and I was just thinking I was really, really enjoying this. Uh, I'm sorry, I've gone all lovely, but I was really enjoying this uh, performance of a. Uh, of a man starting to shat himself, which is a British expression. <laughs> for, our, for our American uh, and international cousins, it means to shit yourself. <laughs> and do you not remember that moment? Do I, do, remember? Yeah. I do. I do. I do. I remember that day. I was. It. Yeah. Well, I don't know how. What to say about that? Other than it, I remember it was. I was finding it difficult. Funnily enough. So that's okay. often. I can remember us way. having a conversation, <laughs> improvising d during that uh, that bit where we um, I, I couldn't remember where we were in the script. story, <laughs> so I didn't know who could have leaked what at what point. Oh uh, yeah, is that what it was? That's mm. what it was, yeah. Well, the leaking was done by different people yeah. in different versions. I still don't That's really right. know. Who. At one point, we did shoot an ending when Judy leaked it, didn't we? Yeah. yeah. Who did leak? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. You're not fucking 60. I love this. Going in the newspaper on the 60s. <laughs> and, <laughs> and Judy spends a lot of time being actually physically abused by people, doesn't she? Like being manhandled and pushed about and yeah. punched and... Uh, not punched, but... Just um, for the time being. Yeah, there's a bit of that. Um, Could she maybe do it with a hose from a distance? That's funny, that position. Got water in <laughs> um, I'm not... I'm I'm he, he just those went on and on and on those phone conversations. Yeah. I was round the corner in a, in the back of a, a cab, very conscious of the fact that the driver was still in there with me, oh, and right. I was having this yeah. mad conversation with. Now this was the bit Enzo was kind of both not looking forward to and looking forward to, which was having his slightly tense scene with uh, with James. I love this scene. I think James is fantastic in this scene. Whatever it is, but uh, it's so powerful. What the fuck? Huh? I Did apologize. he stand me up? No, no, sir. You're you're more than welcome to to. Wait. You know what I'm going to do, sir? No. I'm going to take a nice big shit. And I remember James actually <laughs> finding a magazine and then walking up to one of the uh, extras in the background and saying, "Could you just read this?" And, and not telling him what was going to happen. <laughs> right. So he think? planned in his head what he was what he was going to do with this magazine. Yeah. It's good because it looks completely spontaneous. Yeah. Isn't this poor guy on the on the right here. Oh, yeah, he'd just give a surreptitious <laughs> look there, didn't he? Yeah. <laughs> I don't want to 
read a periodical in this time of national crisis, huh? <laughs> <laughs> like he's utterly bricking it. <laughs> and there's Zach in the background there, no, continually course. hanging around. That's right, yeah. yeah. That's great, though, just... Uh, give us to your boss. But I love when you see them walk away and you just see those backs, see that? Yeah. Yes. <clears throat> and you see Chad turn away and uh, get out of the picture when uh, Miller's looking at <laughs> And it was nice having the whole set there. The bit we're able to walk from one office into the other and wander around corridors and stuff. So it meant that we could really follow people around. And oh my God, what's up? Fucking Linton stood me up. He's playing me. And James and Mimi had spent a lot of time working on what their exact relationship was and their past, if they'd had any romantic, you know. And they'd worked out between them and 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 just. Chad, he just. So, so <clears throat> Karen is the only one who can really talk to General Miller like he's a little boy and little kid and really kind of right. talk to him informally. It's a great relationship, the two of them. It's, it's lovely. I love the, the Gore Vidal. Oh, yes. No, that was all improvised, actually. That was just them mucking about, actually. The... My, my. All right. The, the actual number 10 with an actual policeman. And now the false inside. This was filmed, actually, in Peter's house. <laughs> in the antechamber. <clears throat> the vestibule. We had to clear out the coats. Somebody else. Jamie! Ah, the crossest man in Scotland. Well, if it isn't Humpty Numpty. What is this? Ah, this is Paul. This is, this is the only other character, actually, from the TV series, in a way, isn't it? Yes. Yeah. Who's called Jamie, then? The, the sort of the small... <laughs> The, the version that Malcolm's acolyte who doesn't have any off switch and or any charm it's like you know when uh, when the Fraser characters were the Fraser writers were writing the writing initially how, how do you who, who do you have as a foil to Fraser right and they yes. decided that his brother should be like him only more so right I always feel yeah. that with that's with Jamie, Jamie you know yeah. what, what's the obvious yeah. Malcolm psychic is Malcolm butt with <laughs> no ability to switch off I love that Shut it, love actually. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. brilliant. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so yeah. funny. Don't know what's happened to the artwork. There's quite a lot of um, there's quite a lot of uh, cartoons of of Tom Hollander in this uh, in this film. I don't know what's happened to the artwork. They didn't tell. They said they would not. They're builders. Have you ever seen a, a film? Where the hero is a builder. No, no, because he never fucking turned up in the Paul night. Paul always looks like he shouldn't be wearing a suit. Huh? Yes. You know, he always yes. looks like somebody who's just too live to, to be to be wearing a suit. Always, he's been forced into. I just watched into. that sequence as, as yes. an extra, as an outtake that's on that's on no, line. It's, and the, it's, it's the bit that we've we've released a viral of an extended version of that scene. It's just slightly longer. I'm so it's sorry. Right. Extended version of that scene. Yes. I love this. Scene. Uh, this is the only time that I managed to say this line with a straight face through all of the shoot and all of rehearsals. because when we were rehearsing it, it was like you kept cracking up. Everyone else kept cracking up as soon as Toby does his line about the awful, awful war. This is, I remember this, in the first improv that I did with you, Gina, this, is, yeah, this was, we, right. this was, this, this is Jesse's line, Jesse Armstrong, like this astonishing line. So this, this Liza, you shagged her, yeah? What? And in the edit, and there were all sorts of extra lines in the scene, I think, comic lines, and in the edit I found myself taking them all out because... It was really all working up to to this moment here, really. And just the performance of everyone giggling, and it just felt real. I don't know, Susie. I, it, here we go. It was very <laughs> weird. Very silent. Very intense. Right. Maybe, I don't know, on some level, subconsciously, it was like a... It was just... It was a last-ditch attempt to stop this awful war. You know. That's a great look, Gene. <laughs> Just on a, this, I mean, okay. you, you know, I don't mean obviously wow. to try and. That's classic. To try and <laughs> actually stop it. Toby, did you, did you just say that you had sex to stop the war? Yeah, no, no, no. An no. anti war shag. Is, no. that, is that what you thought, Toby? No, of that's, I... Wow. Can we. Can we just go and discuss this somewhere with that? My wife remarked that, that she, she see me she see me take my glasses off like that quite a lot and now understands that, that at that point brilliant. I'm in trouble <laughs> and lying oh, really? and she now will know. <laughs> Once you've been there. Was the Jesse was the Jesse line that line the, the, the awful war line? That's Jesse's, yeah, yeah, brilliant. 
No, all this Gold Dal really stuff. And, and in fact, yeah, all their complaints about the food are all <laughs> improvised, but... What's this, fish ass? <laughs> <laughs> you read Liza's paper, I guess. Yeah. I am a voracious... And I remember that food was horrible and under the hot lights. And I think we shot it after lunch as well, oh, so nice. it was all a bit kind of... But there's some little... One of those funny little infatuations that we often have with estates. One of mine is when you see people eating out of... The, it's, Those paper yeah, things, yeah. I've got and a you think strange, weird. I just, I've got an infatuation about. And you think, oh, isn't that, that exotic? That's yeah. exotic. They do yeah. that. Yes. And now you tell me it was really vile. <laughs> yes. Exactly. Well, it had to come all the way from the states. This was shot in. <laughs> yes. Hillingdon. Yeah. If he even exists. Shot on a on a an old badminton court. <laughs> yeah. In fact. I wish it leaked this, you know. When do you want to leak it? Me. Isn't that what you were suggesting? No. Well, you don't have to say that it came from you. No, but, you know. I'm not leaking it. I've got to take a hats off to uh, uh, Jamie on, on the camera because they, they 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 don't really know where the action's going as they're filming it, and and he, he has such a instinctive comic sense of knowing where the funny bit is and 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 knowing that. You know, General Miller is working up to talking about Liza through the window and, and knowing that Liza might react at that point and being able to just react, you know, on camera to, to picking up those moments. There are, I, I know you've explained it over and over again over the years, but we haven't on this. Mm -hmm. how, how do you get the cameras to shoot it? Because there's more than one camera. There's, more, there's, there's always two cameras on the go at all times, so that, you know, if, if we suddenly go off script and they're improvising something, we've got it shot on both cameras so that... Uh, in the edit, it's easy to cut it down, but but also on set, I, I don't have to at the end of it say, that was great, can we do it all again now, but I'll do it on a tighter shot, because you can't remember what it was you said if you're improvising. So that's really it, and it allows us to cut around, and, and I, I also let the cameras, you know, they don't have this um, fixation with crossing the line, so that you can be shooting one side of an actor and then just jump to shooting the other side of an actor, and it just feels like you're getting the whole 360 degrees you know, you're coming at it from all angles. Yeah, and they're mm. awful heavy, those things. They are, yeah. So, mm. I don't know, like a 12-hour day, these mm. must be pretty Absolutely. fit. And you've talked about, because sometimes we're shooting in very small rooms and, and you've got these two blokes with big machines in there as well, but how easy is it to uh, blot them out of your kind of, you know, imagine them not being there? Mm. You mean as an actor? Yeah. Um, I, I, it, you kind of get into rhythms with one another and, and um, it becomes more organic, really. Yeah. Easier in this process than usual, I would yeah. say, wouldn't you? Really? Markedly yeah. easier. Mm -hmm. And also because you because it's a it's an organic shifting relationship because if you do something new, Jamie will follow you. Yeah. You are sort of in, in it together in, in a way that you're not normally. All right. But you do have to make your... You do have to have a relationship with the camera, don't you? That's the, yeah. yeah. That's the... The camera is another person in the room that, in a way, I mean, like, really... When you were really, really, really experienced film actors, in my, in my experience of them, their relationship with their camera is the principal relationship they have in the room, which right. supersedes any relationship with any other actor, for instance, right. or even the director. Sometimes. Right. Um, which is an interesting but thing. Presumably but with, with this, this, it's easier to forget about the machine. Well, that's the idea. Yeah. Presumably with this, you don't know when the camera is on you, you so you have an keep... idea because yeah. you, know, you know where it is. In yeah. I mean, you can see these. You've used two shots where Zach and uh, yeah. Zach and Anna are both very aware of where the camera is when they're not even in the room that you're shooting in. Yes, like yes. the one where Zach appeared in the end and where and the scene we've just had there when they were eating the food. Yeah, Anna was yes. quite conscious that she was possibly in that shot. That's so, right. So she has so to kept, keep you going. Know, you can yeah. see, if you can see the lens, then yes. the camera can see you. Is yes. the rule? So, so you had an idea. You didn't know whether, obviously, whether it would be in the edit, but. I think. You're not a lion tamer. You're not a. The the downside of it is that occasionally you can find yourself turning around and you're staring straight down the lens. <laughs> yes. Like, <laughs> yes. Like you know. But I think it's quite good because it liberates you from any sense of technique. Yeah. I think because mm. usually if you know filming is quite kind of prosaic and formulaic. You know, the wide shot. You know, medium close up, tight shot. And I used to think you could sort of modulate your performance. To, to fit the, yeah. those sizes of shot. 
And that was all bullshit, really. Because with yeah. this, you know, even though you, you might be aware the camera's pointing in your direction, you don't know whether they have crushed right in on a big close-up no, of you. No, that's true. Mm -hmm. Or whether you're, you know, sort mm. of uh, full frame. Mm. So what I'm saying is I have no technique whatsoever. <laughs> that seems to be I've fun. never felt hamstrung by technique <laughs> in any... <laughs> I'd like to. But is that... <laughs> Mm. Is that what? Is that completely true? Huh? Is that completely true? Do you think? I mean, it's not. I th well, I think the technique is about the acting, mm. and not about the relationship with the camera. Yeah. Whereas in a more formal uh, set, mm. you, you do have to develop more of a relationship with the camera. I see. Okay. I think. And there are stories you you hear stories of um, of experience sort of going on from what Tom was saying of, of uh, experienced older actors often muffing their mid shots and uh, you know so on so that they actually it's only the close up that's that then work. usable mm. in the edit. Mm. No, this this generally yeah I would this is the most relaxed that that I, I've ever been able to be in front of a camera precisely because of the way that we shot it because all the things that make you tense normally it's about overcoming the tension which is created by having to repeat it having to get your lines exactly right having to stand within only an inch and a half on either side of you all of those things which make it hard to be spontaneous and, and, natural and you and get real. the chance and most of those things are removed in, in, your the, process. in the formal more formal setup do you get the chance to run the whole scene or is it very stop start a line here a line there you generally go from doing the whole scene as a general uh -huh. shot and then you and then you break it down as you get closer and closer you're doing smaller and smaller sections mm -hmm. sometimes you're starting with the wrong end of the scene mm -hmm. uh, depending on which way round you're shooting which way it's mm -hmm. lit mm -hmm. which is the major consideration everything's about lighting really so everything so, follows so, on so really so if you're shooting down one end then and someone exits down there at the end of the scene then you'll probably shoot that before you shoot the entrance if it was the other end of the room so yes. So really, uh, that's it's important under those circumstances that the script is absolutely locked down, and yes, and because yes. you can't alter. If you're working backwards, you can't. Unless you're working you're with a director it. who's <clears throat> um, sort of editing as he goes, more or less. I mean, yes. Not, not fine editing, but yes. has a a strong idea about some choices they could have uh -huh. um, once they're in that process. But so in fact, I mean, you haven't shot in that way, then. Not you, on film. I mean, in some television stuff, I have right. where it's been very locked down because we know there's even some special effects here and all that sort of thing so i know that it has to be you know as it's written but um it depends what the story is and what the tone is you want really but with this i just feel it feels that it should be kept fluid right up to the last minute really but it is very stimulating to work in this kind of way and then go and work on something that's more old-fashioned yeah if you like because yeah. it's interesting to see what you can bring exactly. from one world into the next yeah. because mm -hmm. I mean I, I love films when you see some wonderful shot that's obviously taken forever to yes work on. Oh, absolutely and so you know the only take that ever works of it is when it all looks spontaneous mm. so what have you taken from what have you taken into an, a more formal environment from this then uh, an abandonment of, uh, of of trying to control mm -hmm. uh, either my <laughs> delivery uh, or my sort of intellectual process uh, uh, you can't. I, I, the, 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 the thing that strikes me most about I me, mean, I can only speak for myself, mm. is the things that are, are, are funniest that, that I've been involved in, I have not tried, I have not been trying to be funny. Right, right. Yes. yes. So therefore, it, it's just become very important for me just to be very committed, committed to the truth. Yeah, mm -hmm. of whatever I think the scene is, as opposed to trying to find any comic thing. Mm -hmm. But then that's, that's a pretty good comic comics. rule anyway, though, yeah. isn't it? You know, you need to play things straight. Leslie yeah. Nielsen's funny in Police Squad because he's not. He's got he's such not a mugging, great. Is yeah, he's got he's such a straight look to him. Yeah. 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 And then you find also you are become co like in that last scene we just saw in the car. I, I was, I, I don't know how much it uh, affects your viewing of it, but I liked the fact that it was all one continuous. Shot. It wasn't planned like that. We weren't saying, no, this take has to be continuous. And we shot at every angle and whatever. But the one I went for was that big, long, uninterrupted shot of the three of you stuck in the car. Yeah. Earlier in this um, commentary, we've been making, drawing attention to the artifice, haven't we? But in my experience, this is the least artificial filming process that I've been in, in terms of the acting. It's the, the least artifice involved in setting up a scene. And, you know, essentially yeah. we were just able to behave as people yes. behave and you were somehow shooting yeah. it and we weren't, that wasn't ever allowed to get in the way of... Yes. No, it wasn't like I said, we no, under all circumstances, don't dry in this scene because I want this to be a continuous... <laughs> you know, <laughs> no, 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 no. That's just going to... 
stop everything, really. <laughs> I, I wonder how much you notice things like the continuous take. You know, it, people, there's that, whenever you hear about the, the player, the film The Player, yes. uh, you know, it's got that opening ten minute one yeah. shot thing. Yes. And that, I swear I would never have noticed that. No. If it's good enough, if the story's yeah. good enough, I would not have noticed no. it without somebody, you know, explicitly saying, oh, that's an impressive thing. Yeah. And yeah. actually, I hadn't really thought about that scene. I've seen this film a few times now, I hadn't really thought about that. The, you know, no. the scene works. So, well, but it so creates really some. Noticed. Doesn't it work on a level that you don't know, not necessarily conscious of, though? It creates well, a tension, maybe. doesn't it? It creates a, a sort of, a sort of tension, in, in the in the in the audience, of kind of. Well, you do notice uh, uh, it, not when cut. you're editing. Sometimes things are funny. Like I was saying, you know that scene of you of Simon in the back, standing up at the meeting in the Foreign Office right mm. at the beginning. Yeah, yeah. And all the scenes I'd seen up till then, the, we cut to a close-up of you and then we cut to a reaction. And, cut, mm. and somehow that seemed less funny than just seeing the big wide shot and Simon standing up and floundering, sitting down and standing up and, and just staying on it. Mm. It somehow just seemed funnier because the focus wasn't going away from you. You know, we weren't, we weren't trying to relieve the tension. Well, and also, it's about, it's, the scene is about a, a, a little guy in a room. With a in huge crowd. It's yeah. much bigger than he is, and actually it's just literal, isn't it? So you, and yeah. you're, you're aware of the geography around him. Yeah. From the... It was quite theatrical, that. We should draw attention to Alex McQueen here, who is playing the ambassador, who I think might be the funniest man I've ever encountered in my life oh, really? I, I never don't laugh when, um, when I'm a, watching him except now when I'm not supposed to but yeah. he's just brilliant but it does enforce the kind of naturalism mm. you know I think that, that, it, that it's very very useful to mm. take into other things that's what I that, since doing this I, that's been my you know a kind of lack of uh, um, preciousness mm. about uh, and, and a more kind of it, it sounds daft but a more kind of roughshod approach to the actual mechanisms of speaking yes. and all that stuff well in the latter period of our shooting this you were also shooting um, The Devil's Hall where you played yeah. Charles I which is a much, presumably a much more formal thing I mean everything yeah. looks more formal about it it's a period piece you yeah. know you and, and, and it's presumably a more mannered and mannerly yeah. time but did you feel yeah. Yeah, you because know, you come immediately off playing Malcolm when you were playing yeah, that part. Yeah. Did you did you feel that that was something that you were bringing to help. that? Yeah. Well, it's yeah. great help. Yeah. It was fun. It wasn't such a help the day you turned up with a small pointy beard yeah. to do the scene in the <laughs> with your head under your arm in the press <laughs> office. That was. Now I remember as we were filming this, everyone was going, "Oh, here we come! This is the the moment we've all been wanting." Me on Malcolm meets General Miller, and so and, and I remember thinking, "Oh, we mustn't do that. We mustn't build it up and 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 wherever." And and so I wanted to shoot it quite quickly and. And I don't know whether you chatted to Jim about what, how you were going to do it, but it was nice that it was just very quiet and underplayed and, and there was no yeah. ostentation about it, the scene. I don't think we did anything. I don't think we did any little rehearsals or anything. No, I think you just ran out. And the lines are more or less as, as written, really, aren't they, I think, in this? You know what you look like? Squeezed dick. Got a little blue vein running up the side of your head. See, that's where I put the bullet. And it's funny, as an audience, you sort of want to see this moment. Yeah, but yeah, yeah. actually, plot-wise, there's, you know, it doesn't advance the plot. You know, it's, it's, <laughs> it's, not a, it's not a plot point, you know, there's no vital information here, but it's just a sort of, of garnish. Just a chance to encounter Malcolm maybe beginning to realise that there are other people around there who are slightly more influential than, than him, really. Can I point out a quality yes. of your performance, Peter, in this, is that, is that Malcolm, when he's at his most dangerous is terribly persuasive, almost where, the, where, where you feel, if you're being insulted, you almost want to agree with Malcolm at your own <laughs> yes. patheticness, because it's so charming, and so it's sort of intelligently... <laughs> it's like a torture, an expert torturer. <laughs> that was James' his face. <laughs> that just little look, he doesn't understand uh, what a Scottish person is. <laughs> but also... Um, that is, but those people are the most effective. The ones you really hate, but who you think actually he's got a point yeah. when they're having a go at you, are the yeah. are the worst ones, aren't they? Because actually, that's how they are so successful, in that they do manage to burrow into what your innermost fear is and then articulate it. Which is you know. Stockholm syndrome, isn't it, or whatever it's called, Stockhausen syndrome, where you hate the music so much you end up for no Stockholm <laughs> syndrome, where you fall in love with your 
your torturer. <laughs> yes, because what they're saying is ult ultimately you agree. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You fall in love and with you your what? Your, your torturers. It, yeah, it's called Stockholm Syndrome, where the, where the tortured starts to be a, unable to live without the torturer because there's a form of sort of love has formed between them. Because there's an intimate relationship, I suppose. It's sort of because the torturer becomes a god person that knows, you know, your darkest innermost. So and that's what you do, darling, in your performances, man. Jamie. Jamie. It was me. I think it, Olivia was possibly genuinely scared. Here because when <laughs> Paul goes, Paul is frightening, isn't he? Terrifying. Yeah, yeah, absolutely yeah. terrifying. Turn that fucking racket off. Turn it off. It's just. That's what I mean by the way he wears a suit. He just looks like he shouldn't be in a suit. He yeah. looks like it's the thing that's yeah, holding him. Restraining him. In, you know? him pushing yeah. a wheelbarrow. Yeah, no, yeah, he's restrained by having to behave in a civilised manner, isn't yeah. he? He's constantly trying to burst out. I love this bit. Yeah, he's brilliant. Yeah. It's all fucking vowels. Yeah. Yes. Subsidised <laughs> vowels. Is that what you said? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> what, what? It's just vowels. Which I think he, in one of the rehearsals, he, 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 he said, but a lot of this is, um, you know, as you're in the edit, it's, you have all these strands coming through and you just think, well, should we plant this because there's a reference to it I know that comes up in an hour's yeah. time. So this was like all placing Michael's music and trying to find all the moments where people commented on the music but hoping that that wasn't going to hold stuff up just for this... Because you knew there was a payoff, really, but you had to quietly put the, the elements in um, throughout, really. Do you remember we, tr we had to ADR this? Do you, you probably don't. I remember this as being that uh, it's an ADR. Team. Yes. I always wanted to ask you whether you used the original soundtrack or the ADR. I think we soundtrack. went for the original actually. Yes, this moment. Because I couldn't <laughs> replicate it. It was that little crack in your voice. Yeah. You went, I couldn't do don't it. Don't punch ADR. me. <laughs> but again, you know, um, Jimmy Kearney on on the camera, just finding that shot of 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 General Miller's face dominating. The, the screen and Simon to one side, feeling <laughs> droning, you know. Well, this is what used to really irritate me about when we did the TV show, people would criticise the camera work, and they weren't seeing this kind of... the, the, the authority and the creativity and the cleverness. I know, it's a, a subtle thing. It looks like we're sort of making it up as we go along, and it's it's not that. It's like, I'm, I, I, I don't go in... Because I don't... Whenever I see a shot that looks nicely composed, I actually say, can we not do that? Can we move that out of the way? Or can you just not... So it's not nice and neat and balanced. Um, but but I think some people then think that we <laughs> we don't quite know what we're doing. Whereas, in fact, actually, it's a sort of deliberate thing of not making it feel like there are filmmakers yeah. and programme makers yeah. Yeah. telling you how their story is going to unravel, you know. You but it's a it's a sort of perfect visual expression of the of 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 the story and what's and going on inside their head, you know. yeah. And yeah, yeah, the state of mind really, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. Um, in a way, yeah. You should, Jamie should be doing a DVD commentary, shouldn't he? Because his yeah. the decisions that he's making all the time are um, yeah. a huge part of the process. And it must be a cameraman's dream in a way. Maybe we should ask some, but to be able to work like this so that yeah. they get to any impulse they, they have, they around. can follow more or less. Yeah. Rather than having to rehearse, and it doesn't do it mean any the, one way. the camera becomes a sort of, uh, without trying to be pretentious yeah, about it, you, becomes yeah. a sort of character in the, you know, as yeah. a, you know, you're seeing it from their perspective, really, what's going on. But what's interesting as well, it has a sort, of, it's sort of pseudo. If you were to examine the style visually, you'd say it was a pseudo documentary. Yes. But yeah. it's not actually because you have access to people's private, private yes, moments. Absolutely. You know? Yes. No, no. There's no point. Are you? Are the characters aware that they're being filmed? Um, <clears throat> and I remember in the edit, again, trying to just get the rhythm right so that just when we'd forgotten about Steve Coogan, he hey. comes back, you know. <laughs> but every time I see it, the audience have cheered when yeah. he's gone, oh, yeah. <laughs> hey, there he is. And he's just trying to, in the, you know, and, and sometimes in edits, you know, I, I, I find with, when you're doing a 30-minute programme, you know, you spend a day editing, you're quite happy to sit and watch the whole thing back at the end just to see how it fits. But with the mm. film, I found, actually, you did have to, to know whether that hello worked at the right point, you did have to, at the end of the day, sit and watch the whole film right. just to know whether, you know, it got the kind of, you know. That's why I'm now quite mad. <laughs> <laughs> and that sounds, that sounds awful. <laughs> I mean, I like the film, <laughs> but, you know... <laughs> All this idea of, you know, like, go back and do an extended version, a redux. No. No. <laughs> Please, no. 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 
This is unusual, isn't it, in this scene, because the lighting here is actually quite melodramatic. It's like, because it's all from this is bottom up, isn't unusually it? Yeah. composed, the lighting state. But it was based on, there is actually a meditation room in the UN, and we went into it, and it does look like this. It's this size, and it does have a big slab of uh, uh, unreligious yeah. stone in the middle. And Space Odyssey-ish monolith. Space Odyssey, you know, and... And we thought that'd be a great place to have like secret meetings and you know top level discussions and stuff. There's a there's a there's a Mephistophelian bit that Peter does in a minute that's an object lesson I think in how to um, act thought uh, yeah. technically. I know, but uh, in a close up, <laughs> the bit where you have to turn where you have to think, what am I going to do? Oh right, this is the close up. I'm going to yeah, do yeah. that, and there's yeah. the tiniest. Yeah. yeah. Somebody remarked on that in a review. Actually. Oh, did they? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm. Was that my mother's review? Yes. Yeah. She said, I, I like Peter's eyes. I like Peter when he just stopped yeah. swearing for a minute and... <laughs> He's got lovely eyes. He should use them more. <laughs> we actually used an eye double for... for uh... It's very fucking complicated to tell. <laughs> Why are you laughing? <laughs> the way he said it's very fucking complicated to tell when he was clearly in the wrong. I was like a little, almost like a little boy. It's out there now. It's getting fucking shot. See you later, Malcolm. I remember Peter, because uh, I, I hadn't mentioned this to you, but this threat that you issued to Toby, you, you had sort of worked out that Malcolm was so desperate he couldn't think of a threat. So he's sort of struggling to come up with a, a decent, a half decent threat. Yes, yeah, so I just wanted to sort of to collapse a bit. And yeah. To fucking stab you to fucking death with it, right? So just, just go away, go away. Here it is, coming up, coming up. <laughs> here we are, here we are. There was a version when the, this look was like three times as long, but uh, I just wanted to come out on the move of the eye, really. Yeah, yeah. there we are. Move of the eye. The move of the eye. That's all you do, you move your eye. You move your eye. But not too much. <laughs> One millimetre or two millimetres? And also, it sort of almost went in two, it was in two stages, that little eye movement. <laughs> Tiny little... I'm sure that wasn't... You weren't in control of it. I wasn't in control. No, yes, but you channelled something. Which yes, something just happened on that day. Led you. I seem to remember we did at the very end of the day, didn't we? We had to try and get this walk all the way through into the United Nations main... Mm -hmm. Yes, to so getting the timing of it right. Yeah, problem, yeah. I know it was you who leaked Clinton's war committee. Oh, right, um... My son came down to watch all this, I remember. Yeah, and he, didn't he, he made a fantastic suggestion, I seem to remember, there was a no smoking sign, remember, there was a no smoking oh, sign right. and Jim was watching the he was going, would you be able to read that? And I thought, no, you can't. So we got it moved. Okay. <laughs> that. That's my boy. Ah. So basically, I, I let him shoot the last ten minutes. <laughs> <laughs> but there was also. <laughs> somebody... Is that all right? That's not unprofessional, is it? You know. Excuse me. Excuse me. Pleased to be able to tell you that by some huge personal effort on my behalf. It's a good skill to make the word huge funny, isn't it? You know. <laughs> he can make anything funny. <laughs> it's a terrifying gift. Mm. Two and a half hours. It's a curse, really, isn't it? It's a curse. No, I will not put myself through that humiliation again. I'm just not doing it. It's in the cut. It's in the cut. Oh, yeah, it's beautiful. The cut. Cut. Do the cut gag in the cut. Well done. <laughs> <laughs> Another small man walking into a large room. There you go, yes. Got yes. Quite like that. Well, that's great news, isn't it? Well, it sounds ominous. Right, we want to get Lisa Wells' Pip Pip out there. Uh, I would, yeah, draw attention to the use of classical music throughout the film, which, yes. not this obviously is a detail of the character's obsession yes. with it, but your soundtrack is also, is more Merchant Ivory than, than, um, <laughs> yeah. than comedy caper. It's a contemporary costume drama. <laughs> <laughs> but your first but it costume, it's good though, it somehow it makes it <laughs> brilliant. But your first piece of composed music uh -huh. came when? When we went to New York? When we went to New York, yes. So I meant to point that out, that was the first time we actually had a piece of music that specifically, specifically composed for that. And, and I just felt that the, the, we sort of want to shift up a gear when we go to New York and that whole UN section needed something to just keep it motoring along. And, and I did in the cut have bits of classical music, but they never quite did the job that they did earlier on. 
and also the fact that I wanted to keep the classical music associated with Michael and, and uh, okay. Debussy and, and all that kind of business. It was so nice. So what I something. said is rubbish, then. So is it, no, 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 no. But it's the cla- but it's it's still strings, isn't it? But the classical, it's the, the, the composed of... music is is rhythmical. Is this here? You can hear some of it. Here. It's very nice, and, and it's and it is. But it is in a slightly ca- classical style, it's in the style of sort of John Adams or, or, or right, you know, Steve Reich. It's, it's slightly more Brian Adams, contemporary classical, but still <laughs> Brian Adams. <laughs> I think that would have given it a bit more. Oh, yes, that would have. Uh, there was going to be a closing song from Brian Adams as the credits were. <laughs> you know. um, it was going to be "Climb Every Mountain," but done by Brian Adams. But uh, <laughs> uh, featuring but, Alicia Keys. <laughs> But uh, Julie Andrews has got the rights, and she 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 wasn't going to let them out of her palm. I tell you. <laughs> so we had good fun actually, and um, doing the music, and 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 yeah, Ad- Adam who who did the music. I mean, he yeah, did. There's lots of the, the new music here, and and I did. He did come up with stuff for earlier, but I found myself stripping it out of the earlier uh, where it came in earlier, just simply because I didn't want too much. Of our music to, to to, and it was nice having Michael's music starting to bleed into other uh-huh. scenes, and then that allowed you to accept the fact there was going to be music, and then you could start bringing in the newly composed music. Simon's theme. Simon's oh, theme. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Simon's theme from yes. In the Loop. <laughs> yes. Number one for 18 weeks. <laughs> And when the CD comes out, it's got like titles of, of scenes that have then been cut from the film. Like, <laughs> Judy's Lament. <laughs> the Black Cat. From, um, oh, what were they called? They were called, uh, the band playing at the Black Cat were, uh, they, were, they, were playing a, they were playing one of their old tracks called uh, Mummified Bong Water. Mummified Bong Water, and they were yeah. called Cannabis Corpse. Cannabis Corpse. Cannabis Corpse. <laughs> they were yeah. auditioned. <laughs> They were, weren't Didn't they? They, they yeah. were auditioned. Cannabis, co- Cannabis corpse. Star, star, cunt. Oh, it's always gets a huge. I didn't crash the. Uh, yes, I always get a C-word. huge round of applause. The use of the c word there in an unexpected. Uh, Welcome aboard, Eliza. Um, I will make this brief and to the point. We're going to go in. He's great. He's brilliant. <laughs> he spent a lot of time watching Rumsfeld and Cheney and, oh, and John Bolton, who was the UN, the oh, American ambassador to the UN, who was just the rudest man ever. Oh, he's horrible. Um, he spent a lot of time just watching their mannerisms to, to get this Linton oh, character. Really? Yeah. There's this tr- uh, clip on YouTube that David pointed me at, which is Rumsfeld being asked a question in some Senate committee. Uh-huh. And, he, and he's asked, you know, he's basically asked, did you lie, kind of. Uh-huh. And he stops and goes, my, my. <laughs> and just you know, and the, and the, yeah. as though to imply the impertinence yes, of the of the of the yeah. questioner, yeah. and uh, you see an awful lot of that in the way that David yeah. David mm. plays Barry. Oh. Well, Foxy, don't cry. Ah, oh, we James. James Smith there, providing some actual moral heart <laughs> <laughs> to the film. <laughs> the biggest media impact. I've been thinking. Yeah. This has been the hardest political decision of my career. <laughs> it's Zach in the background. <laughs> Chad, hanging around. Fuck, George. Before the war, I was going to resign, but now that there's a war on, I can resign. You said that this was intolerable. You said we would go together. It is intolerable, but I'm going to have to tolerate it. And I, I still agree with myself on that. But They're I, a strange sort of double act, aren't they? The Karen and Miller. It's really good. They, they, they work very well, though. The idea that... Because she's such a... She is calling him on things. Yeah. And he's an enormous man who you don't want to call on anything. Yeah. But she's got that kind of... Something that none of the men in the film could possibly do, no. in fact. No, on their own. ...some bullet-ridden, bloody corpse into the Pentagon every five years to renew your soldier's license. It's unnecessary! And this is... Uh, this section here, this is all them now. This is... We're on... Off, we're going slightly off-script now into there. I can talk right. about your balls all you want, because oh, I remember when they were... Oh, I fucked you once 20 years ago, and I never <laughs> hear the end of it! Every time we're together, i got to listen to this shit! I don't even remember it! Come on, Chef, we have to draft resignation announcements. Actually, Zach has a line here that is almost lost about oh, General Miller's balls. General Miller's balls, what is it, size... Two-thirds like of a two snowman. Two-thirds of a snowman. Yeah. Where did Fantastic. that come from? What do you need to stick around for? Well, I just want to let you know, sir, that I think you've got big balls. It's it's like two-thirds of a snowman. 
<laughs> so this this blanket denial as well here by Barrick is. Oh yeah, uh, classic. Yes. <laughs> no, we didn't. No, 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 Simon, no, 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 listen. Hey, 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 look, 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 look. No, no, no. You still don't need to resign. I do. I'm resigning in an hour, and there's nothing you can do about it now. Um, nothing. Boss. You react badly yeah. to lager, don't you? Um, it's all over the place. <laughs> <laughs> Can't hold your beer. <laughs> the wall. Mrs. Michelson's greenhouse, obviously, there's been a pain smash. The BBC must have had a crew down there. <laughs> God, how ridiculous. Yeah. And that's news. <laughs> well, it's not it's ridiculous. So. Your greatness, Tom. Ridiculous at all. But also, I think this is the bit where Malcolm, any sympathy anyone might have had for Malcolm has gone, gone at this point, because this is the most evil that you, you see him. Although the, the other stuff is about war, there's something about this. I think it's the hounded to an assisted suicide. Yes, right? yes. It's totally Because it's interesting watching in, in sort of preview screens and people actually, when Malcolm tries to get the dossier concocted to, to get one over in Linton, People are sort of cheering him on, even though they're thinking, but he's starting one. But, yeah, then it kind of goes here, and, and suddenly we realise poor Simon has um, just left it a bit too late to... Uh... I suppose the dossier is because is Malcolm was on the ropes, wasn't he? Malcolm yes, was actually, yes. you know, his, he, he, he was under threat, and it's yeah. him pulling through. But here, he's, now that the threat's gone, he's back to um, ruining lives on an individual basis. <laughs> I love that little laugh. <laughs> There's just some nervousness. I remember because we sh I, again. I think we only did about two or three takes of this, yeah, and it was, it was really quick. went was really quick. quick. And but it was just all there. It's just all the kind of the tenseness and the. Um, right, you remember we did the long shot. I remember doing the long shot, the first yeah. one, yeah. and it being it being really a wonderful, wonderfully real, mm. and then. Yes, almost regretting when we had to go in on it, but it yeah, was still, yeah. I mean, in a traditional way, but the, yeah. the first time we did it, it just was... Uh... And sometimes, you know, because there are two cameras on the go, there's therefore two monitors for me to look at, and, and of course you can't take everything in yeah. watching two monitors. So sometimes things come as a real surprise to me in the edit when I'm actually seeing something properly for the first time, and I remember watching that scene once it was cut together and just thinking, well, that, that's it, you know, there's, there's, there's nothing else to be done to that scene. It's, it's all scene. there, you know, it's... Uh... This and that's is great. Tiny, that tiny little moment you have with Miller, there yeah. was a big speech written, and in the end we just decided, I, no, I, all over in seconds. I, because it was in the script from the beginning, and I thought, that's one scene that I get with James Gandolfini, I bet that goes, I bet, right. I bet it goes, and then it survived all this way, it survived all this way, and we got to the day, yes. and you and I were talking about it, and it, it, was, it was really obvious to us that it would be much funnier yes. if it was that tiny moment, and I can remember the immense regret that I had of that, of that <laughs> feeling, but there was, it was the best thing to do. You might be Secretary of State someday, young man. You don't say that if you don't mean that. When you know when all of this. This that carpet is famous, it's isn't it? Over. It's is the it? Royal Festival Hall's tennis, but it's, tennis it's iconic carpet. in the design world. Yeah. I is can't this? Remember oh, right. what it's called? <laughs> yeah, it's called. <laughs> it's called it's something called like apostrophe or something. Or something. Or it is. That's something right. like that. Yeah. 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 Festival of Britain. We do all these cheats because this is in London, but we found a, a window that looked out onto a building that might well have been in New York. It's a shell. Yeah. It's a shell building. It's a shell it's building. 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 List of DVDs considered suitable. We'd always written in the script all these sort of, you know, where are they now? Kind of, you know, uh, the plot. The film is over, but let's stay with these people just for a bit longer to while the credits come up, so that we can see what they're up to now. It's partly a cheat, really, because I've always hated it when in films you watch a film in the cinema, and as soon as it's over, and the credits, everyone gets up and there's thumping of seats and people. So it was really a, an, attempt, <laughs> an attempt to keep people in the seats while the credits came up. Oh, I love when people do stuff like this. It's great. <laughs> oh, really? I love it. Oh, good. You know that phrase, I'm too old for this shit? Well, I'm too young for this shit, you know? Oh, here's the new minister. Malcolm. <laughs> there she is. Ladies and gentlemen. Look at you. Nice to be here. Thank you very much. Fantastic. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Hello, Judy Malloy. Nice to meet you. Yeah. Uh, Danny. Loves that he's Dan. Danny Dan. Yeah. <laughs> Danny Dan. <laughs> right from the beginning. <laughs> to a proper callback, that. Mind your step, there's still blood in the deck. Uh, yeah, sure. You can use that one. How about this, huh? Cheers. How about this? Look at that on this. Very glamorous. Sensitive side step on my It is. That's fine. I think there's a wee bit of brains there. <laughs> <laughs> and this is the this is this is the loop theme. This is Adam's. Uh, 
loop thing that you hear, which I really like. And, uh, and it is a I, loop. I've just it is a sort of loop, yeah. But, but the whole story is a loop, isn't it? Yeah, because and, we come um, back to the beginning. That's right. That's not intentional. Conscience, that's not conscious. But yeah. Yeah, well, it's the thing of, you know, that's what happens in that world. You know, yeah. they just carry on. They just get rid of well, the people. Well, it's got who... an echoes of The Shining, hasn't it? <laughs> I thought it was Chibilla <laughs> <Which, laughs> <laughs> Malcolm Tucker is Jack Nicholson, and everyone else is just a guest in his so horrible hotel. So who's the strange little boy? That's Chad, is it? Yeah. The, the boy from The Shining. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I kind of toyed with the idea of keeping people in the seats even longer by keeping the dialogue up, because we recorded you for about five or ten minutes in, in the room just all chatting away didn't we uh, yeah. but for some reason it, it felt like I don't know I, I did do it with a with the soundtrack of what you were saying playing and it did sound like I don't know you want a point where you just want to go ah. yeah, it's a uh, well, I think it adds another tone to the film I yeah think it's really nice I think it gives a, a sort of uh, gravity or melancholia it's just like, well yeah, yeah it's sort of like we're pulling away now and just letting them just all get on with it and stew away and then Malcolm yeah. strides out at the end though, he does delivering for, for another people, piece that is my a, 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 that is a, my a thank you for anyone who stayed behind <laughs> yeah. to watch all the credits yeah, yeah, yeah. they can go home and said well you should have stayed to the end <laughs> you know <laughs> it's all it's all cynical <laughs> the music because the music's yeah. so um Costume drama, for want of a better term, <laughs> it sort of gives because in a film that's so unrelentingly cynical, right. it allows you to feel there's an emotional yeah. thing that it, it allows you to feel, which you could easily have. I mean, it's just music is very important, isn't it? And it it, it, it triggers a response in you that yeah. leads you yeah. one way or another. How how directors use music is always something I'm kind of interested in anyway just because some of them do it with great restraint and then the music has more impact when it does come in yes um, yes I think people like to see a film yes do you know what I mean yes. I think music is yes. part of that it's, yes you know yeah. I think yeah. what it is is trying to not have music that is telling you what to think yeah. do you know what I mean sort of the strings go all tense so you think something tense is going to happen I remember Robert Altman <laughs> Sorry to name drop, but he said exactly that. He said something about music, film music. You shouldn't notice film music. No. It should be there, but if you're noticing it, there's something wrong. Oh. But I suppose well, that's, that's... good to know. We've only... Yeah. Mm. So it must be true. So, for the benefit of people who have stayed behind... <laughs> yes. He, here he comes. Here he comes. <laughs> Who let this woman out with fucking hair like this on national television? I think she's got a finger stuck in a fucking electric socket. Unbelievable. 